Any reactive rapid HIV test result must be confirmed in the lab. This is because a small percentage of rapid HIV tests may give a false positive result, approximately 3 per 1,000 tests undertaken. That is why if an initial test indicates the presence of HIV antibodies or antigen we say it is reactive rather than positive. It is not possible to diagnose HIV infection based on a single test. Indeed, the aforementioned rapid tests are screening tests rather than diagnostic tests. Not everyone receiving an HIV diagnosis has a rapid test in the first place. Indeed, a majority are usually still diagnosed through the standard laboratory testing procedure. What is commonly described as an HIV test actually consists of two distinct lab tests which when used in conjunction with each other are 100% accurate in diagnosing HIV infection. The first kind of test undertaken in the lab is a gennacarining test, called an enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay or ELISA for short. You may also hear it referred to as an or enzyme immune assay, ELISA and ELISA are different names for exactly the same test. An ELISA test is basically the same technology as a rapid test, but with an ELISA test multiple samples can be tested at the same time thus lowering costs. Blood which has been drawn from a vein is delivered to the lab and is then spun in a centrifuge to spate the serum from the whole blood. The serum is what is used for the ELISA test, though the other components left behind can be used for other kinds of tests if these have been ordered by the doctor. The serum is then transferred into a well on a test plate, the kind of item you can see on the left-hand side of this picture. Various chemicals are then added, along with HIV-specific antibodies. If HIV is present, a color change is observed and like with the rapid test, this is then said to be a reactive result. While it is possible to undertake this process by hand, it will now typically be semi or fully automated and done using a machine. As we have already said it is possible to screen multiple samples at the same time, though these will always be de-identified so the lab staff do not know who the sample belongs to. Samples are only identifiable by a number, with only the ordering doctor being able to reconcile the result to a patient's details. ELISA tests were originally invented to screen blood donations for HIV. They are very accurate to the tune of 99.5%. They are also very sensitive so that they are able to screen out the maximum possible number of infected persons. They may be sensitive but they are not very specific, therefore another kind of test is necessary to make up the complete HIV test. The other kind of test used in most parts of the world is a test called a Western blot. The Western blot isolates specific HIV antibodies which are unique to the HIV virus. As this test is specific to HIV it is able to effectively rule out any false positive results. Again, from the point of initial infection it takes between 4 to 6 weeks and sometimes up to 12 weeks for people to test positive on both an ELISA test and a Western blot. The picture on the right of your screen shows a multiple Western blot results from a single patient followed over a period of time from the initial point of infection to 30 days after exposure. You can see how the antibody response evolves over time from positive to negative. This is a scientifically perfect example, but the same pattern of antibody development is observed in most people, with just the time it takes to go from negative to positive varying.